What's going on guys? Lomax here and welcome back to another Battleborn character guide. This one will be featuring Awani. Awani is the second Eldred support character and first DLC character to come to Battleborn. She is a water-based hero who can heal allies in the blink of an eye, making her a high priority target. We'll see this healing in action as we get into her abilities in Helix Tree. Her primary attack, Torrent, allows her to hurl water bolts at her target. She has a 4 strike combo with successful hits providing her stacks of osmosis, her passive. They are only added on successful hits of Torrent, so you cannot pre-stack by firing into the air. You also cannot build stacks off of shards, but you can build them off of turrets, accelerators, etc. You can have up to 3 stacks of osmosis indicated by the 3 bubbles that act as your crosshairs and three hits will fill up one bubble. And attack speed is also a really nice thing to have here because it will allow you to gain stacks faster. Wellspring, her talent, is her secondary attack and will envelop a single ally in water, healing them. If you do not target anyone, you can heal yourself for half of the amount. And the higher the osmosis stacks, the more effective your healing will be. This will provide very effective healing to allies in the late game when you have full stacks and an ability to gain them faster. Your osmosis stacks are consumed upon the use of Wellspring. Her first skill, Riptide, allows Alani to release a wave that deals damage as it moves, pushes enemies away, and leaves a trail of water lasting for 3 seconds that can speed up allies. This skill can be used for good peel and disrupt skirmishes or teamfights. It's a good skill to use if you're losing a fight or getting chased. Her second skill, Geyser, allows Alani to target a location and release a geyser, oddly enough, that knocks enemies into the air, dealing damage to them and binding them for one second. This skill is better for wave clear as it does pretty good damage, but does have a long cooldown. The area of effect is kinda small, and it takes a moment for the geyser to erupt, so this skill may take some getting used to. Her ultimate, Emergence, allows Alani to deploy a Water Dragon at a target location or mark a targeted enemy. Upon targeting, Alani releases a giant whirlpool in which the dragon emerges from after a few seconds. Enemies hit directly by the dragon will take the most damage, and enemies on the outskirts of the whirlpool will take less damage. On a side note, you can also target allies who are good initiators to have them go into a fight and have the dragon erupt. For her Helix Tree, we'll start at level 1, obviously. Our first two skills will be Soothing Mist, buffing Riptide, and Splash Zone, buffing Geyser. Soothing Mist is going to add a healing effect to Riptide. It will heal any ally on Riptide's trail over time for the 3 second duration. It's not her best form of healing, but it is an AoE heal that is applied almost instantly as your allies walk over it. Splash Zone is going to add a healing effect to Geyser. This skill will provide a burst of health instead of health over time like the other skill. This skill will provide more healing than Soothing Mist in total, but it does have a longer cooldown, plus the eruption delay might make it harder to heal allies if they move out of Geyser's target area unless you can coordinate with them. At level 2, we'll get two buffs to Geyser to choose from, Diffusion and Surface Tension. Diffusion is going to cause Torrent projectiles to bounce between enemies bound by Geyser. If you are able to bind a lot of enemies with Geyser, this can be a really nice skill. You can double your damage even if you only hit two enemies. If you can't lock down multiple enemies, this skill will pretty much be useless. Surface Tension is going to cause one target hit by Geyser to take additional damage for a short time. As a bonus, a percentage of the damage that target receives will also be taken by nearby enemies. This is a great team ability as it will amplify any damage your allies do as well. It's a much better choice compared to the other skill in my opinion as you're going to be able to get bonus damage from more sources than just your auto attack. At level 3, we're going to get two skills buffing Torrent, White Water and Go With The Flow. White Water is going to increase Torrent's attack speed. An attack speed increase is always a good thing as it will directly buff your DPS and in this case will allow you to gain stacks of osmosis faster. Go with the flow is going to reduce the cooldowns of all skills on every hit of Torrent. 
You get a second off your cooldown for every two hits with Torrent that connect. Given that Alani has some pretty long cooldowns, I would definitely recommend this skill as you can take some decent time off your cooldowns so long as you can hit things. Both skills at this level are really good options. The first will provide more osmosis stacks and more healing, while the second will provide more utility and crowd control as your abilities will come off cooldown faster. I encourage you guys to try both of them out and see what you like for your own playstyle. At level 4, we're going to get two buffs to Riptide, Wet Blanket, and Ride the Wave. Wet Blanket is going to slow enemies hit by Riptide for a short time. This skill will definitely be nice to have in PvP as it provides an area of effect slow. However, in PvE, it is not that useful as the slows aren't going to make much of a difference versus AI. Ride the Wave is going to allow Alani to ride Riptide, launching her forward as it travels. This is going to give Alani a gap closer or escape depending on how you use it. This also has really good synergy with Soothing Mist as you will heal for the entire duration of the ride. I prefer this skill because it makes you a lot more mobile in case you get caught in a bad position. At level 5, we're going to get two buffs to her passive Osmosis. They are Karaka Fruit Express and Full Saturation. Karaka Fruit Express is going to increase Torrent's damage for a short time whenever Alani gains an Osmosis stack. With this skill, ideally you want to use Wellspring right before you hit your third stack. You will do increased damage on every shot except for your first if you do this. Every shot after you hit your third stack will go back to doing normal damage. The only thing is you will have to wait a moment to shoot while you use Wellspring, decreasing your DPS for a second or so, so only use Wellspring when you can afford to. Full Saturation is going to provide damage reduction whenever Alani heals with maximum Osmosis stacks. Now this applies to the target healed, so if you heal an ally, it will give them the damage reduction, not Alani. If you do not target anyone with the heal, then Alani will receive the damage reduction. This is a nice skill to have, especially if you have a tank on your team. The damage reduction itself will last 6 seconds, which is a pretty significant amount of time. At level 6, we'll have a choice between Channeling, which buffs Geyser, and Refresher, which buffs Riptide. And both skills will indirectly buff Osmosis as well. Channeling is going to generate a stack of Osmosis for every enemy knocked into the air by Geyser. This will be really effective versus minion waves or large groups of enemies, as you will be able to reach the maximum amount of stacks in one use of Geyser. Chances are you will probably have max stacks or very high stacks quite often at this point. Refresher will provide Osmosis stacks over time while moving through Riptide pools. Taking this along with Riding the Wave is going to give you about 1.5 stacks guaranteed, so long as you remain on Riptide for the entire duration. Both skills are good options at this level, but I tend to prefer Refresher as you can gain the stacks anytime and are not dependent on hitting an enemy like you are with channeling. At level 7, we'll get a choice between Pressure Wash, which will buff Torrent and Osmosis, and Overflow, which will buff Wellspring. Pressure Wash is going to allow Torrent projectiles to travel faster and generate Osmosis stacks faster. Now I didn't mention it before, but Torrent projectiles do not have an infinite range like bullets do. They have a limited range which can make it very hard to hit distant targets. This skill will help eliminate that issue, and as a bonus, it will be easier to gain Osmosis stacks. Instead of every 3 hits to gain a stack, the stack will be generated every other hit, meaning it will take 6 hits to fill your stacks. By this point, you should have little trouble gaining 3 stacks unless you have absolutely nothing to hit. Overflow is going to increase the minimum healing amount that Wellspring provides. At this point, it shouldn't be that hard to gain Osmosis stacks, so you don't need to worry about the minimum healing amount. I would pass on this skill and take Pressure Wash at this level, which alone would make it much easier to gain stacks. At level 8, we'll get two buffs to Geyser, Aquafire and Old Trustworthy. Aquafire is going to reduce the eruption time of Geyser. It is nice to have the quicker eruption as your geysers become a little more manageable. It will make it easier to hit targets because you don't have to account for a super long delay, but keep in mind the eruption still is not instant. Old Trustworthy is going to increase Geyser's area of effect. This skill is great because it will allow you to hit more targets and gives you room for error in placing your Geyser with an enlarged AoE. 
I tend to go with all trustworthy at this level because it gives you the potential to bind a higher number of targets, but both skills are good here. At level 9, we're going to get two buffs to Riptide, Stagnant Pools and Waterproof. Stagnant Pools is going to increase the duration of Riptide's Trail of Water. This can provide you and your allies with a longer healing duration if you take Soothing Mist at level 1, and will leave the movement speed increase up longer. Waterproof is going to increase the distance that Riptide can travel. This will allow you to more safely escape or just get around the map faster. This is my preferred option at this level because with Ride the Wave, you can cover some serious ground. At level 10, we're going to get a buff to Alani's Ultimate Emergence. We have a choice between Undertow and Deep Song. Undertow is going to slow enemies standing in the Emergence Whirlpool. This skill is going to give Emergence a large area of effect slow and is only going to help in teamfights, allowing your team time to get to the fight and deal damage to the enemy team while they are incapacitated. Deep Song is going to heal allies standing in the Emergence Whirlpool. This skill provides great healing per second in a large area of effect. You shouldn't lose very many fights if you are able to fight on the Whirlpool with this skill. Both choices at this level have great strengths. Undertow should be used offensively to ensure the enemy will not be able to escape a fight, or maybe just your ultimate. And Deep Song should be used defensively to heal your team while fighting. Choose whichever skill you think will best suit your situation. And that's gonna do it for Alani, guys. She is a monster late game with crazy healing capabilities and great crowd control. There's incredible synergy amongst her skills and she can be played in a variety of different ways. As always, feel free to rate and or comment down below. If you would like to see future videos, feel free to subscribe as well, and I'll catch you next time.